Okay, let's just go right. Let's. Why don't you just uh, start on off, Annie, and we'll follow in. Okay. Yeah, and I apologize. I, I'm looking at these different um, settings for video. I don't know why my camera's not working. It should be working. That's okay. We have some. We have some. Um, I, in case I made paper copies of the latest version that you sent me. So, okay, well, so, so we're able to sure follow. Have to share my screen at least. Okay. Otherwise, we're able to follow a lot of paper if we have to. Okay, great. So let me. I always set that up um, in case. It says screen is sharing, so it, it looks like it's, everything's taking the side form. So um, I will just jump in and say um, I'm not going to go through the entire slide deck unless yeah. unless that's really the preference. The first several slides are really a couple of things. One is to context set around what we're presenting to council um, and you know what the project is. And a lot of this will go through very quickly. It's just in case there's council members. You know, I know you have some new council members that support the project was initiated, and so giving them just a chance to know sort of what is the scope of work and what is the purpose here. That's similar thing with. Um, you know, giving them the background on what analysis has been completed to date. I think, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, these sorts of feasibility studies are really tricky because uh, it's hard to know how to time all of the things like public engagement. And so I just want people to understand sort of this is a planning level exercise. We're trying to, you know, understand this from a feasibility perspective. And certainly I think we expect that there will be additional public engagement or, you know, uh, if the city were to move forward with something like a, a bond, that's the stage at which we would be asking the public some of these details. So uh, having them really understand the scope of the work is for their benefit, um, not not necessarily something we need to cover in depth, but it's just really to have it in the slide deck. Okay. Um, and then this, you know, several slides up to, after that, I think up to maybe slide uh, maybe like slide 24 uh, are just the situation assessment. So we met a couple weeks ago. You all have read, for the most part, the situation assessment. Um, I do want to make a couple notes of some content in the presentation because um, based on your feedback and just based on, I think, the wanting to communicate clearly to council, um, I added a couple of exhibits. Um, and really, there's no new information contained in this presentation. But there are some places where I updated the exhibit to dig in a little bit more deeply. Um, a great example of that, let me see if I can tell you the slide, um, is uh, around expenditures and it's slide uh, 15. So if you look at slide 15, it's in the operational assessment section. Let me see if I can get this. I don't know why it's not. That's OK. Sure. We've, we've got it. We've got it here. Uh, so this exhibit was not previously in the situation assessment. I've now added it to the situation assessment. But essentially, uh, as you'll see later in the presentation, I think it's really useful to understand how Longmont Public Library's uh, spending sort of fits into a broader sort of tier group. Because uh, we do have this uh, on slide 16 where we look at where the library fits in among all uh, Colorado yeah. libraries. You know, that's really helpful. But then it's also like, you know, okay. let's put this into context of what are your peers actually spending on library services. Uh, and I will just say, you know, this becomes very helpful later uh, as we look at the actual, what would it cost to deliver the preferred level of service? Mm -hmm. Because you can see that it's very much in line with what your peer libraries are spending. Uh, a couple of notes here is that, uh, you know, something that is uh, not, maybe not obvious when you look at this is that the, this chart is presented from the largest peer library to the smallest. So Longmont is close to the um, smallest in terms of library service area. Um, and I saw, when I looked at this, one of the things that became really clear to me is that the library is sort of um, taking a step up in terms of who its peer group is. So you're now starting to play in a bigger sandbox than you would have you know, even 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Because as you grow, you're becoming a much larger city. And you're the type of urban environment where people are expecting a higher level of urban services. So um, that's why, you know, Longmont Public Library is something very, uh, that is explicit in my sort of overview of the situation assessment, is the, the largest library that only has one outlet. Uh, and, you know, I think a lot of that is because you're getting into this kind of bigger sandbox where um, these larger library systems are either serving larger communities or they're not municipal libraries. Okay. So, um, this way, yeah. There's a couple other exhibits that I would say are new 
Um, or at least like I'm calling them out that I did call out in our previous presentation. Another example would be on uh, page 17. Uh, I just, as I was going through the level of service content, I was like, man, it's really helpful to understand what are we actually spending on collections um, historically. So that's why that exhibit has been called out. Um, and then one other uh, peer exhibit that's new is on slide 22. This is really like a background exhibit, but I wanted to be able to provide um, the numbers to back up uh, two claims. One is that you know, we have a high number of visits per open hour, but a relatively lower number of visits per capita. Uh, and then what does that look like for our peers? You know, a claim that we're making in the situation assessment is that uh, there's a strong correlation between library visits per open hour, um, and there's you know likely unmet demand for library hours because, and that's why our per capita visits are low, is because there's just not enough hours. Uh, so I wanted to have the numbers to back this up. Uh, you know, the council's preference is to have just a 15 to 20 minute presentation, and so on some of these slides. Uh, I will be saying as little as, you know, here's some background data that supports some of the, the points I'm going to make in the next couple of slides. Um, and so, you know, we won't necessarily go through each of these things for metrics in detail, um, but that way if someone asks a question like, well, you know, what about uh, Westminster Public Library, how many outlets do they have? We can go back to slide 22 and we'll see that we have that detail provided in the slide deck. So, um, I did also add, this is something Nancy and I talked about a little bit via email, I added sort of a takeaway slide. Um, a question that both Karen and Roni and uh, Mark asked me at one point was sort of like, what was my sort of couple sentence takeaway from the, the study? Um, and I really want to make sure that we're uh, being very clear about what the takeaways are here, um, which is that you know there's very high quality library services being delivered. And in terms of the, the resources available, the library is performing very well. Um, but you know, there's limitations to what can be provided within existing resources. I also think it's really helpful to reiterate the point that um, library expenditures have been decreasing over time. So you know, the library has been really forced to do more with less over the last several years. Um, and you know, that's a big challenge, even if you don't want to get into what you know, a higher level of service would look like, the library simply cannot continue to provide the same level of service with fewer and fewer resources. At a certain point, you just cannot be creative and efficient enough to do that. So I want council to know that this is really at a critical juncture. Um, so that's the takeaway slide. After that is sort of the new content that I think we wanted to cover with you all tonight. Uh, but I've got to pause there and see if there's any questions. And Scott just brought up a good point because you and I have talked about tipping points before, and and you know that's that's the question I guess. Are we already there? Are we at that tipping point? Are we past the tipping point? You are. Know, right. So yeah, Nancy, I actually feel like uh, later in the slide deck I answer this. I think so, you kind of I think you kind of do. I just wanted you to keep that that yeah. kind of question comment in mind. Yeah, and honestly, I I'm comfortable saying they are at that tipping point. Uh, and that's one of the reasons what you'll find in the, uh, the financial analysis is that we have what I call option zero, which is a no action alternative. And that says, you know, what would it cost the city to continue to maintain the current level of service, which we are positioning is not an option. It's not an option to do that uh, because there's things that you don't have as a library to deliver this level of service. But that option is presented in there. The reason for that is to show what is the delta between mm -hmm. what we need to maintain an actual baseline and what we're spending today. So yeah. that's the reason that option's in there. And I think that the, just the presence of that option is should be communicated that continuing on in this space is not, you know, this is not a sustainable operating model. So uh, I will think about uh, in the <coughs> takeaway slide. Uh, I don't know that, I'll, I'll think about whether we want to update that language, but I also think that that's something that should be in my comments. That you know the library cannot continue to provide services without It's it's absolutely true, and it's it's true already. I mean, I'm looking at we're looking at on, on city council tomorrow night. They'll vote on whether or not to increase minimum wage. We have a bunch of minimum wage shelters that are now making twelve something an hour. They'll probably go up to fifteen fifty. That that and then we run into you know, we get 
The city's not calling it compaction. I'm calling it compaction because we're not running into, that's when you run into the next level up of wages. Mm -hmm. And we aren't overlapping, but the, the duties of the next level are all customer service based and the duties of our minimum wage folks are not. So I think there should be a bigger space. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there are all kinds of things now that we're already running into. So I think that's a good point to, to make that, you know, the more we, I'm not opposed to people getting paid better for, for what they're doing, but if it's not coupled with the other folks above them also receiving consequently better pay for what they're doing, then you end up with trouble. Yeah. And then you end up with fewer, pay, you know, you end up with, if you end up with the same amount of money, then you end up with fewer staff members because that's what you pay for. So I think we're already there. Yeah. And, you know, I do think uh, something to be aware of uh, in the analysis is that the analysis is predicated on existing um, salary schedule. Yep. So for any new positions, like using the highest end of the city salary schedule. Okay. Um, but, you know, the assumption is that you can't be beyond the salary schedule. So That's if true. you find that you're going to be, you know, using in the, the short term or the near term, that due to whatever factor, the great resignation or just in, the, the general need, are going to be positioning the city council to increase that salary schedule, we certainly could include a contingency or we could model it with those higher wages. I don't, um, I don't think that's going to happen, Annie, in the, in the near future. They are doing some job audits, but I don't think that's going to come to anything soon. I think it's just the okay. minimum wage level that's being affected. What's it, what do you okay. mean by contingent fee? Contingent. A contingency would be like, um, it's very common in feasibility analysis to say that this could, um, you know, this is the estimate, but it could be up to 10% higher. Yeah. And then, you know, put a contingency on it, just like you put a construction project. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, that's totally common well, as a case. We could include some kind of range uh, based on things like, you know, I, I put in the slide deck and I think it's very important for us to remember that, uh, you know, our analysis is based on today's market conditions and historical uh, trends. And our market conditions are changing very rapidly right now. We are seeing extremely, you know, high, much higher inflation than we've seen over the historical period. Uh, the great resignation is a uh, potentially a major uh, change in in um, the labor market, and there's lots of things that could. You know, the other thing is, I'm an economist. I expect uh, some kind of correction in our economy every seven to ten years. That has been historically what mm -hmm. our economy has looked like. We've not had a correction going on for ten years. So it's just really, really important yeah. to remember that a feasibility study is only as good as as its input. And the inputs right now are based on you know a really high growth economy uh, with low inflation, and yep. th those trends may not continue in the future. Yeah. Okay. No, absolutely true. If you yeah. considered uh, adding a a risk slide to your presentation, what do you mean, Mark? So that here's your base analysis, whatever you come up with. And then you have a slide that says here are risks to the space analysis. Space analysis. One risk would be inflation continues. That's another contingency. Another, yeah, that's a contingency. Yeah, that is what that would be. Yeah. So the, the risk analysis is um, on the slide. I'm going to tell you what number it is. There's one called I think limitation. Yes. Um, and that is yeah. Uh, I thought I saw something like that. Yeah. I got our next steps. I don't see it. I don't see limitations. Okay, so uh, we might need that. Yeah, so that's really weird. Uh, okay, so so, so the limitations is going to be pretty much what we were just talking about then. Um, yeah, well, absolutely. So, um, yeah, because it, it basically said what I was just saying about um, the Great Resignation was named specifically in there, inflation rate is in there. The, no. The, so, so where my head was at, I mean, those are good risk things, but, uh, you know, another risk might be delay. You know, if you delay making a decision on this and you try and make it three years down the road, then the cost then numbers will, will yeah. be all That's shot. True. That, um, funding might not be attractive. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think, and, and let's, um, let's maybe come back to this, the 
question I'm going to ask in just a minute at the end. But my hesitation with any um, decision making right now is that we're not actually asking counsel, at least from my perspective, we're not actually asking counsel for a decision yet at this meeting. Um, what we're asking them for is to review what we're doing and the initial results and tell us if they need to, if they need to be um, also the analysis so that they, they have an outcome that they can evaluate the choices. Uh, so, for example, like if they look at it and they're like, we would never spend more than, you know, the 50th percentile on library services or, you know, we have a hard limit of whatever, um, you know, to fill or sure. something like that. Um, we're looking for that sort of feedback. So, when we do come back to them with the final options, which the steering committee will vet first and come back with their preferred option, um, they're able to do that. So, I'm not against including risks beyond just the limitations of the analysis, but I also want to do that thoughtfully about around what are we actually asking council for okay. um, at, the, at the meeting. And, and um, you know, I, I would argue that our position is that. Uh, if they delay this, then the library might, or and the library board might choose to pursue a district model. Uh, and so, go ahead. No, so, there. Just so, so no uh, there's a camera. <laughs> so, ju just to follow up on some of those points, Andy, I I understand your your point where you say you're not asking for a decision in this meeting, but I think it's important in helping um, your audience understand what concerns you have with the data in the study. It, it, not necessarily it's, it's not put together correctly, but here are the risks that you have um, come across or you've, cons you've thought about as you put this study together. And uh, I would say inflation's one, I would say delay is one, I would say, um, uh, you know, what the labor market is, is are there enough, you know, capable people coming into the labor market to, to satisfy this? I mean, there, there are, this is a very dynamic time that we're in, and I don't think it's, I think that's it's actually, unfair to, to, to at least point out to, to your audience some of those risks. I think well, she was talking about the Great Resignation, and right. that, that is affecting, it hasn't affected us yet directly, but it is affecting a lot of libraries, and I'm in touch with a lot of other library directors, because people are often now choosing to do something else other than face-to-face -face customer service, mm -hmm. because you know, after being really scared mm -hmm. from the pandemic, you know, a lot of folks are thinking, well, gosh, if I could do a job instead where I could work at home and not be forced to work on this public service desk and be exposed to pandemics, that would be a good thing. So we are getting some of that, and we are seeing some of that as we survey staff as to, you know, as staff request more and more, you know, what can I do? How much can I work at home? What can I do off desk? And our answers are not much for a lot of staff, because if your job is to do face-to-face -face customer service, it's hard for us That's to make job, up things yeah. for you to do at home. So. How much of that is burnout, though? Um, I think some of it is, Just but we don't we don't end up. You know, libraries traditionally good libraries don't end up with a lot of folks leaving because of burnout. People let people stay a long time. Yeah, but we just had a pandemic, which is a well. So that's why I'm saying yeah, that is, yeah, it is. It is. And we've had you know more retirements. Definitely, we're seeing you know a greater an increase. People often, I know people work for me in libraries huh? who've been 84 years old. There she is. So, so you're not seeing that anymore. Right. People are retiring when they retire, when they're able to retire. So, so that's, that's a change. So I think there'll be plenty of critics out there that will assign risk to your work. So I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> But as the creator of, of the study, I think you have an insight in terms of things that you thought about as you were putting the, the numbers together that you said, hey, you know, this I'm I'm making this assumption, but you know, this could go the other way on me, and that may change the study in this direction. That's that's what I wanted your help in understanding. Maybe we should move through. We only have a half an hour left. Sure. Andy, so right. Maybe we can maybe we can continue to move through and Andy, and we'll think about those questions. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay. So, and I do just you know we will at least put some kind of limitation slide back in here 
And um, I think this idea of this being a point in time analysis that uh, you know we have, we're at a critical juncture where it is effective to do this, but you know if libraries funding were to degrade more, you know there's always things that could happen that would make it more challenging. Yeah. So that's great. I also just on that note, you know I think what's happening in Boulder could influence things sure, yeah. here, just because yes. it's uh, an example. So excellent point. Absolutely. Excellent well, point. Well, that is uh, there's a risk there. So. Yeah, uh, I'll put that in there for sure. Uh, the next section of the slide deck, though, after the situation assessment, is really around, um, you know, we spent a couple of weeks circulating on the library board around setting level service standards. Um, I wanted to sort of put in this idea of the fire. So this is not just what we heard from um, the steering committee. This is everything that, you know, really like this, the highly prioritized and summarized list of what was in the community assessment from TEA as well as you know in the full um, sort of survey data and the stakeholder um, interviews we did. So you know when I say this is you know summary, this is things that came up thematically. So it doesn't include like everything that every single person suggested. Uh, my guess is that someone in there somewhere suggested like a dog park for the library or something. You know? Or it's you know cat cafe. Um, and so it doesn't include those one off things that we heard but it's thematically things that the community needs and desires from its library. Um, we've refined this list. Um, the idea here is to communicate why we need more library services and what would be done with those services beyond just the quantitative, this is what more library services look like. Um, we also set some standards. So, you know, one of the things that's really challenging about library services is that you do a lot of different things, um, which not all of them can be easily quantified, and they also are interrelated. Um, and so we have just set some high standards that will help um, sort of set what would we be buying with these dollars if we were to expand services. Um, and the, the key indicators or metrics are collection spending, library outlets, and library hours. Um, one thing that I heard from Nancy that um, I have not updated yet is that um, the baseline maybe should be 65 hours a week because that would make both more sense with your current schedule. Um, they could be anything. So, you know, if you wanted, you know, 24 or 7 library services, you could put that in. Um, <laughs> this is really just about responding to what the community's needs and desires are. So, yeah. I have put in 64, Nancy suggested 65, which I updated in the box. If you didn't update on the slide, so I will update the slide. Uh, but if you all discussed, if you were like, man, what we really want is, um, you know, 10 hours, 7 days a week. Um, the 40 hours per week is similarly just that is just an initial uh, cut. Um, this is based on the idea that you know at your branches you might have a more limited schedule that more closely matches you know people's like out of school and weekend routines. So you might have like mornings, space and evenings, and weekend take times. Um, again, I just looked at some example libraries in Colorado. You can tell me any number here. What I will say is that the number of hours for branches does uh, affect our staffing model, sure. and it does affect the um, variable costs related to operating the library. So I just, you know, um, if we do change these numbers, it will change the projected costs of the baseline for purpose scenario. And Amy, that's something we've talked about with staff a lot, is that interconnectedness of all of this, because we know that we're low on our staffing FTE. We know that we need more staffing, like, yesterday, but we have no place to put anybody. So that, that's that's one of those things where I'm thinking, oh, we have to have branches with, with some decent staff space, but we have to be housing some staff. We literally don't have room to put one more body. So yeah, so um, yeah, those are all important things to think about. Um, so you know, where, the, you know, just so you know, like some of the, this, these numbers shouldn't just come out of thin air. They're based on the discussions I also, where it was possible, looked at you know the 50th percentile, the 75th percentile for all of Col all Colorado libraries. Um, so that 650 per capita and that 10 dollars per capita represent the 50th percentile and 75th percentile respectively for all Colorado libraries. That may be too much, too little. I don't know. Um, you know, you can think about what you want those numbers to be. Um, the, you know, the other interconnected thing here with collection spending is that you have to have. You have to have space to store the collection. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and so it would be that this is great for the short term, but in the long term, you really only need $4 per capita or what have you. Um, those are just things that you guys should all discuss and we should figure out how to update them. Uh, that's, you know, pretty easy. And also, you know, this is an area where you may start with a lower number with council and, uh, you know, you can always adjust up your collection of spending later. It's a relatively small. <laughs> I was like, uh, that's not generally how that works. Usually you start high and negotiate down. Uh, yeah, yeah I, so I, like, I want to sound very flippant saying that, but I, what I would say is that you are going, in my perspective, from my perspective, this is going to be something that you need to negotiate intensely with council. And if I were to make a compromise right now, I would compromise collection spending over getting those branches, right? If you get those branches, your council's not going to be able to tell you that they're not going to fill them with books and materials later, right? Yeah. You're going to have a much stronger argument and you're going to have much, really much greater champions in the, in the community to, who are going to be able to say, hey, I want a Spanish language collection in our South branch. And you know, that's that's a much easier conversational conversation than coming back and saying, Hey, you know, you, you gave us one branch, we want a third one now. Yeah. Um, so that's all I'm saying. I don't mean to sound flippant when I say it, but I just I do think, you know, um, you know, even ten dollars per capita in collection spending is a lot less than one branch. So that's true. Um so after a level of service standards, um get into sort of like what well, what are the sustainable operating models for these kinds of leverage services? What's um, right away? Slide 30. three is a really 30. key slide because one of the or, yeah because one of the things that uh, I really learned through this process is that the, there's actually very few options for the leverage. Uh, there's many expressions of the options that are available, mm -hmm. but from a governance perspective, there are not a lot of things that make sense. There. Um, you're not going to become a county library. You're not going to become a joint library. You don't have a higher educational institution in Longmont that would make sense to be a partner for a joint library. It just doesn't exist. So St. Brain Valley School District would be a terrible partner, even though for the public <laughs> school, that might be a great idea. They'd be a terrible partner, okay? They do not have the library services that their students need, let alone becoming a partner. They don't play well so, with others either. It's a hard brain show. Yeah, and so you know, they, yeah, you some of these things sound like great ideas. They're, they're not the things that we're going to suggest in this kind of feasibility study. So and then lastly, the uh, regional library authority, um, you know, one of the things that I learned from the informant interviews is that, you know, while Boulder is working through this process on their own, there is not a big appetite for collaboration there. Um, and I think a lot of that is that according to the Boulder County Library, they have looked at doing this with Longmont three times, and it just never has gotten off the ground. There's not enough agreement on in how to make that work. So I'm not going to tell you there could you could potentially um, do a, a collaboration with an outside library, but that is outside. I think outside of what we can do in this feasibility study, unless we were to start having those discussions now. Um, and just so you know, they they've done this study, like they did their version of the study in 2018. So it exists out there already. Um, and they are planning on going to, to a ballot and finish them, which is going to be really interesting to see how that lands. But I think they're thinking in November of 2022. You're talking so, about Boulder, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're very well versed in what Boulder's up to. So. Okay. Including so, changes. Well, yeah. I, mean, I would say, you know, just without having done any analysis, it's unfortunate that there's not an opportunity for collaboration. But I think there's some real really strong arguments to be made about why it doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think right it's, I don't think it's dissimilar though to the, to the, um, you know, studies that we did in, in Bellingham. I think there's a, there's a different, there's a definite like, difference in, in communities and community mindset. You know, I think that, you know, there was a good reason why, even though economically it probably made sense that Bellingham public didn't join the county because, you know, yeah. Whatcom County had just a different focus. So, also, I think, just uh, something, if I get pushback on this from council, I think something that is really important for us to be able to point out is when you look at uh, system level spending on that slide 15 again, you know, Boulder is spending eighty four fifty one per capita. Our most yeah. aggressive option that I would present is less of that. Mm -hmm. So would you want to collaborate with a, another library and have to spend that much when you could do it just for your own community and spend the same? So, you know, just lots of things in case we get pushed back on that topic, that's but the, you know, ultimately what, it, what this comes down to is that there's really two governance options that make sense here. Now, it, it was just municipal library versus 
library district. I think within the municipal library um, option, there are many expressions of what that could look like. So this idea of a cultural district has not been lost from the analysis, but it's really just an expression of municipal government. It is not substantively different. You're not going to create a cultural board for um, there isn't a funding mechanism for that. If you were to do that, it would be more like a library district, um, but with the with the museum, that's not. I don't think that's right. favorable. So that's why it looks like fewer options. But as we go through our analysis, we can express these in many ways. The other thing is that um, a municipal governance is the governance model. There's about a bajillion ways you could fund that. So um, we have looked at a, a like one version of a funding strategy. We're hoping that council will give us more direction about you know what sort of funding tools do they want us to look at. Um, you know, Boulder, for example, modeled both a, le a levy, a mill levy, and a sales and use tax. So, we can do that here. You know, if the council was, was like, yeah, we want to know a sales and use tax, or if they want this much from property tax, this much from sales and use tax, we can we can come up with these options, fund in fifteen different ways if we want to. Um, so. Well, it's really just four options in terms of governance model um, and level of service. Potentially, we could express this in many ways once we get in, once we add in that layer of how would you fund it. So, um, so the options that we are actually looking at are the oh, so a couple things about the um, yeah the options are that we're looking at are on slide thirty three uh, that no action alternative um, is really important here because. We are not considering this as a sustainable operating model of the life. So this would be if they continue to pay, you know, just what they've been spending over the, the historical period, they continue that amount into the future. That's what it would look like. The purpose of having option zero is that you can subtract each of the preferred options, one through four. You can subtract option zero from it, and then you know the net new dollars needed. Um, and that would be very valuable to the city because what we want to remind them is, hey, we're not asking you for Seven million dollars for the library. We're asking you for an additional three million, you know, or what mm -hmm. is. So where um, are those numbers? They're right after this. They're yeah. At, they're at thirty-five. They're on slide uh, thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. One, two, four. So um, the so, you know two things on slide thirty-five are there's the operating cost for each um, operating model, which I guess I've got to spell an error here. Um, sorry about that. Uh, and then there's the actual, what is the net new dollars that would be needed for each option? Um, so the, and I even the net new for um, the uh, library district, because I think you know one of the key questions that we'll have, uh, or the council will have to answer, is if you go after a library district option, um, would that supplant the existing tax dollars, or would the city continue to receive and use those tax dollars and people will be paying, you know, just a very, you know, very large new tax. Um, and I think that's going to be a challenge that Boulder comes across. That's but, you know, they ask for the library district and the library district has to fully fund operations. That's going to be a pretty big mill levy. Um, whereas, three point, you know, it's three, it's three, three point nine, three point nine is what they're asking for. Million $20 million is what they're looking for. Yeah, so, and 3.9 mills is that's quite a lot. lot. You know, that's well, Boulder, where the average well, house is yeah. $1.3 million, it's like you yeah. you And the the biggest, <clears throat> well, most most of the challenges and complaints that I have read so far are people saying, well, no one's told us what you're doing with the current mm -hmm. $11 million. Mm -hmm. So is it, are you, are, are we really going to be paying $31 million for the library? Or what's happening with mm -hmm. them? So whatever happens yeah. here, I think it's really important to specify what happens with the library's current budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and that's why when you look at you know the funding and financing strategies, what you'll see is that uh, for the municipal library, we just look at what it would cost to fund the delta, the, the new revenue needed to fund the library. So not the share that is already existing, but just the additional resources needed. So, so, so is page 35 incremental numbers? So what, what it means is that right now we're 880,000 below the table. Is the additional yeah. So, so uh, option four, it would be $3 million over what you're spending yes. now. Is over how plus the four right. yeah. So if you look at the yeah. actual chart, and I can do, I can duplicate this, this um, chart and do the total cost. So, 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 so,
I just didn't understand because it wasn't labeled. Yeah. So option one would be to, to be at baseline. We would we are short by about eight hundred eighty thousand dollars, which is what we thought when we first started looking at this, just to reach baseline. So okay. a little, little under a million dollars short. Little so, for, which is what for you right now, which is what I said, eight hundred to yeah. a million. Okay. So, but that's kind of, yeah. So an option so one. So two, yeah. Yeah, two, two would be Bare Bones Library District. So you would be right. adding one million one fifty, and then you have preferred municipal and preferred district. Yes. Okay. okay. And they're both, it's they're both around three million then. Yeah. So okay. added on to the four we have now. Yep. So we had a, we had a we thought it was about eight. This is about seven. Except Andy and I were talking though. We don't. There are some costs that we don't know yet. If we're looking at branches, because you know there are branches and there are branches. You know, I had 1,200 square foot branches. I had 35,000 square foot branches. So there's a huge difference in cost and operation. So th that would have to be more specific okay. so, to get to numbers, which would make the numbers go up. Mm -hmm. This is this is baseline. Yeah, and so you know that's again if we want, given that we're presenting this sort of in an initial picture to the council, if we want to add a contingency or if we want to adjust these up a little bit um, now would be a good time to do that we can always adjust things down um, I can tell you honestly at this stage of council um, you know what's important is really to show them that there's a very you know very significant difference between the baseline and the preferred but there's not an extreme difference between city governance versus library district um, and you know really have them understand that this is about buying new services for Longmont residents. This isn't about the governance model. The governance model is essentially just a strategy to govern and pay for those services, right? But the, you know, the, what we're really, what this is really about is making sure we have what we need. And, you know, they, we can't continue the way we're going today, right? And it's to show that at minimum you have a resource need, whether or not you implement that preferred level of service. I think that it is important to point out, and like you said, I've been trying, trying to be Switzerland through most of this, but it is important to point out that, you know, if you're looking at city revenues, you know, municipal revenues, it would have to be, um, you know, there have been instances where libraries ask for additional city revenues and, you know, they've been given and then removed. Mm -hmm. So not that dedicated directly to the library. Libraries often have been a part of, and they talked about this in Bellingham, we talked about, you know, yes, we need more for the library, but we also need to need more for this, this, and this, and we're going to lump it into a quality of life type tax, and, but then, you know, it's kind of arbitrary from the library's point of view, how much of it goes to the library after that. Yeah. Well, the city is, as you know, it's reorganizing, yes. and you're going to be at a thing called culture and recreation. I know this. And that's a very different structure than where you're sitting today. Yes. And we don't even know what that's going to really look like, um, budget-wise and structure-wise, from a city perspective. Well, libraries are always kind of the odd man out when they're in, you know, city organizations because of not being, you know, seen as not being a revenue generator. Right. So it's always difficult for libraries to be kind of in competition, if you were, with revenue generating yeah. entities because we're the opposite. We're trying to take away our fines and our other things that generate revenue and, and create an equity. Mm -hmm. So. We're in a different spot. Yeah. City, when we met with city staff, they were all excited about how much money the golf courses are making. So. <laughs> hey, golf was golf was the champion champion of COVID. It was yeah. like the one that made yeah. the money. And that's, that's important. Thing, that's so it, I actually have a comment on the golf piece, though, because I think that they're all excited about how much revenue golf's generating, but the municipal government has had to subsidize golf. Um, this capital bond, yeah. right? That's right. So it's not fair to act like it's fully revenue generating when the enterprise is being subsidized. Um, and I, what I wish is that we could look at, you know, what is the net number and is there net revenue? My guess is there's not a net revenue. Um, I don't know. I don't so you could also use something like we have a thing called Next Light here, which is an internet service. Yeah. And in five years, that bond is paid off and, and they're not going to lower the rates. And that is about an 80 to 90 percent gross profit margin product it's going to produce tens of millions of dollars a year yeah. of profit for the city yeah. and they're going to keep it so the city thinks along those lines here we have a very um, revenue positive uh, city management 
So they're, well, that's they're, not a bad thing. <laughs> so. they're very aware of where, where, where they can make money. So not, but not just, you know, doing sales tax and yeah. the usual ways, but they also look at services they can charge for. So, and I think that's good, but I also think it's bad in a lot of ways. The cities are not profit centers. Government should not be a profit center. Yeah, I mean, something for you all to think about is whether you have some power in some of these observations to come up with something like a future, like not at this stage, but at the final study stage, you know, there's a couple of things that you mentioned that you could use to create a lot of enthusiasm and energy for the library project. So culture and recreation, you know, there's been a number of recreation facilities that you've looked at as a city um, that have not come to fruition. Is this time to propose that you're going to do recreation centers with, you know, library branches attached? Like that's an example of something that could um, be a proposal. The next slide is another piece. You know, one of your proposals could be like, hey, you're going to generate profit from next life that should go right back into the community and serve the people who need internet access who don't have it, right? And you know, there's, you can make a strong argument for uh, some of these dollars. Um, that, that's I'm not familiar. So in Washington, uh, enterprise revenues cannot I don't. I don't think it benefits the government at large here, so to speak. But what we are pretty good at is socking money away in places that I wouldn't call it hidden, but it's definitely um, <laughs> it's it's a uh, put in reserve. We have a lot of reserves in Longmont. We have a very conservative um, financial organization for the city of Longmont, which has actually served us really well in the past. Especially doing Yes. yes, and but it also means that um, creativity in these things is not mm -hmm. as likely to be findable as it is in other places. And, and I'm very familiar with um, even this community, but other communities where I've been, where they have combined you know senior services and libraries, mm -hmm. definitely recreation and libraries. I'm completely not opposed to doing that, but what almost always happens, and what's happening here is that the library was brought in as a thought at the last minute to try and increase the positive um, thoughts about the happy thoughts yeah. of the community. Because everybody loves them. And so they do, but and I would not be opposed to doing like a library rec center, for example, but that would be with the condition that the library isn't on the ground floor of the planning and is not yeah. tacked on the end. Yes. So mm -hmm. tacked on the end to get votes for something else. It would have to be a, a, a well thought out facility. And some of them, you know, I, I was in the planning of that when I was working in Santa Clarita, and that was a good 10 years ago, and guess what? They still haven't built it. Yeah. So it's still being argued yeah. back and forth, and that's 10 years that they've been arguing about this one this mm -hmm. one center when they could have built a, you know, built a branch or put a branch in a retail strip years ago. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Really bad uh, the harder it is. Yeah, I mean, it's really important to be thoughtful about where your power really is yeah. here because unfortunately, you know, the city has a lot of agency in this decision mm -hmm. um, and the voters' agency is more limited. You know, you ultimately, if the city, you know, moves, let's say the city is like, yes, a preferred library model, let's yeah. do it. Uh, and then they don't back that up with the dollars. You're back in this, this position where you would then have to go out for that library district, although you would have probably harmed the goodwill of the community. Um, and the voters may not want to do that, knowing that city council might not um, reduce their city taxes, yeah. right? And so mm -hmm. you're in a really difficult position in terms of who has the decision-making authority. We're almost um, out of time. And you know, we can't mm -hmm. lose sight of that. So, mm -hmm. so um, question is, are we going to have another time to talk to her before city council's meeting? Probably, because we have that. So, so the 26th, yeah. So we will be able to meet with you again, Annie, before mm -hmm. that? So uh, I stay probably oh, okay, fifteen or twenty minutes. Yeah. If, but I certainly, if you want to, we can schedule some more time, Nancy. Uh, do you, do you want to schedule is, another one? I think no, is she coming in for the council meeting? Yeah. We should schedule well, one right before. So here's why I asked that. Um, you know, we we met with city staffs, senior management, right? So, yeah. and um, they were pretty clear that they wanted some fairly clear. Um, uh, assumptions, you know, like not just here's some dollar amounts. I mean, you can you can probably extrapolate out of this 
Um, <laughs> and no consultant feasibility study in any library I've ever met is going to say, okay, city, you should do a district. Or, okay, right. City, you should do but this. what so they what they are plan. kind of expecting is a one slide of bullet points. So that's the, the whole thing. Well, that basically says here are your choices without you know saying here's what you should do, but a very clear. Imagine Brian Bagley trying to look at this, you know. Um, because that's, you know, because I'm, I like using him as an example because he's a skimmer and, you, and these guys are super, super busy and they don't have a lot of time. So you're better off taking this stuff and put, if you could sum it, so I don't see a summation slide in here that makes it very clear. Summary. Not even executive it kind summary. Of is, though. Not even, well, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of that thing at the front of your college, you know, your, your 50 page term paper in college where you have a page and a half of here's what this says. Well, I do know whenever whenever I start, whenever I used to start companies, sure. I would, when I'm, and I'm talking to a venture capitalist, yeah. they mm -hmm. are our venture capitalists, that's yeah. what the city, yeah. city council is. I always had, I need, always had a slide in there that was very clear, here's what I want, here's what you can get, um, and here are the, you know, the best case, worst case, no case type scenario. I still think we need the rest of it, though, for the people who do read things. Because yes. like, I, I was looking at, like, Pool and Ice and a few other things, and I'm like, well, where these numbers come from? And I don't see, I don't see the list. I don't no, I'm, I'm not. the one who looks and says, where did you get my thing? How did it happen? So I can, I can do that, Scott. The issue, though, is that I'm going to have to make a lot of assumptions. Because right now, what the city council has not told us is whether they have a preference on how we work it. How we would fund these activities, right? Well, so I, right now, yeah, there's only two choices: sales, sales tax, and property tax. tax. Yeah. And no, the other two no, choices no, are. No. That's what they think. I'm telling you what they think. Okay, this is what they told us. So, okay. and then the other two things are: um, we keep we keep the money that the property tax. Um, if we go all property tax for the city into a district. Uh, and we can we can mix and match things up if we keep it a municipal library and we keep control of it. This is Jim Golden talking, who's the who's we? CFO. Do you, City you control of it? City of Okay. Yeah. So if it, so if it stays municipal, then then it can be a mixture. Uh, if, it's a property tax and sales tax. Yes. If it's going to be a district, it to they're be. they're keeping the sales tax, and you're going to have to raise all that money as With a property district. Tax. Yes, property that's tax only. So that's and you know a whole bunch of other controls. Right. So those are our real, yeah, only our real choices, but they want to understand, they, they would like, uh, they expect this plan, this is what Harold says, He's, he expects this plan to have a fairly clear, they should be able to walk away from that presentation with a clear idea of what they probably should do. And I think we're close to that. It's, it, we're getting closer. I just, I'm just, mm -hmm. I like, I like that final slide that says, here's, here are your choices, you know, mm -hmm. A, B, or C. Powerful. 
to to see the full analysis. Um, it also what the recommendations are of the steering committee. Um, so I am a reader. I sit on our bargaining team for our. So I go through our master contract. We go through all the language. Oh my we look at the data. We I look, feel for you. <laughs> uh, so I, you know, for me, I'm I'm very detail oriented, and I know that we have other folks on council who are who are the same. Um, so I think the one that I felt was really powerful was looking at this. This yes. there we are. Where how how are we? Just how much are we yeah. putting into our library in comparison to, to neighboring cities? Well, I think some of those um, things that she listed, like that we're 93rd in funding per capita out of 112 libraries in Colorado, that's pretty powerful. Oh, that is pretty powerful. She's powerful. talking about so, slide 50. Do we, want slide to be, 50. Do, we want, do we really want to be 93rd out of 112? Yeah, this and so I think it drives that, that message home, you know, as you're prefacing all, you yeah. know, all this information, and then it's like, okay, well, if we want to get to where we're comparable to yeah. our neighboring districts. Yeah. This is what we need. Yeah. This is what the steering committee has said we need. At least at least at that fifty percent baseline. At least that fifty percent, and then optimally it was it was the seventy five percent. Okay. And I don't think we want to really have. I mean, yes, it, it is nice to have that slide at the end, and here's your choices. But it's not that important. But. The thing is, is then it, you, there is a risk in adding okay. that piece in there because you'll have some people. And actually, I'm trying to think of personalities on council right That's now. That's really helpful. Thank you. And it's, I, it Thank you for I think that you know most everyone on council, if not all, really want to have an adequately funded library. Um, for those of us who are you know, in the social justice realm and just fighting for equity. <coughs> Um, the library is the way that meets those needs it is. Um, because they, they offer free services and it brings it's a hub for um, and we you know we want to have it multicultural we want to yes. have it comfortable for for um, folks from different backgrounds and language that they can come in and in order to, to have that happen we have to have the funding yep. to back that so I think you know it's really creating this um, building up that narrative this is what we want to get, you know, then this is what we need. Okay, all right. So you were right, I was wrong. Well, this is what she does for a living. Yeah, yeah. 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 Even if the library districts were charging 
their own mill levy, that's going to impact the city at some point. Because yeah. People are going to be unwilling to pay more property taxes, even if the city needs them and why the district doesn't. You know, just yeah. I have a question. Um, has has there been any kind of like a hybrid of um, municipal and library district in in any of the research or anything that you have so, seen in communities? There's, there's two things that can be hybrid, but they're what I would say is very minimal. Like they're very low down in terms of high expressive options. So okay. you could have a hybrid in the sense that the library district could be formed and it could contract back with the city for administrative services. Um, what I would say is that that may be efficient. <laughs> Just but you're talking at a very just, tiny yeah. economy, you know, Definitely. very uh, tiny efficiency, right? You're okay. going to save tons of money, and it isn't really even at the level where it's worth showing that as a separate option, um, because it is, it's such a small potential efficiency. I think this idea that you could have a library district where the city would still govern it is kind of antithetical to why library yeah. districts are formed. So mm -hmm. that's sort of hybrid where it's a, a taxi district, and but the city governs it doesn't exist however you can effectively do that yourself what that would look like is that you would pass a levy for the library and then the city council would still govern the library and you have this dedicated levy for the library yep. Um, yep. and you could communicate to taxpayers that hey if we need more money for the library we're going to update this this um levy. Yeah. village rate right mm -hmm. that's how you know the life all of the library's funding comes from this village rate but you certainly could For the taxpayer, as far as yeah. lowering that what they put in yeah. for the district, that's what I was kind of looking at. What can we do to kind of bring down that cost and maybe core, you know, um, connect the two fundings from the city and the district? It seems like what has been important in, in areas that I've seen, and, and you know, like I said, most of the complaints ahead of time about Boulder are you know, that they didn't seem like they expressed a plan well for what they're doing with their current budget, and mm -hmm. so you know, some some entities have. Have literally given the money back to the taxpayers. Have okay. said, okay, here's our, you know, here's your current four million dollars, and, and you get a, all of you get some money back, mm -hmm. and that's one option that people have suggested. Like you lower your sales tax, exactly, mm -hmm. something like that. And then the other option is that you have a well thought out plan of where it's going, mm -hmm. and you say, you know, because of, because we need more for this human services, mm -hmm. you know, option or housing mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. You know, homelessness services or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think you know, whatever whatever happens, it's really important to have a plan for what happens. It ha yeah, it has to be very clear. Because I just think because that, that this hasn't would been be going to the, the vote of the people. Yes. So then they have a right to know what happened. They have a right to know. And, like and I think if there are too many questions, yeah. that was one of the things that I heard from residents, yeah. folks that I talked to, yeah. Yeah, other teachers, families, uh, with the rec yeah. center. Is that there were too many unknowns? There were too many yeah. questions as far as the messaging yeah. that went out. So as long as the messaging is very clear yeah. that this is what we want, this is what's going to happen at the end yes. if we have this yes. piece. Uh, I think that that adds that clarity for the voters. Right. And I mean, and I mean, most of the people, it's like you know, you're you're pinching pennies here. Yeah. I mean, that's what, 
it's kind of what we're doing. So we don't have that extra expenditure. So that thought of an additional tax is very unnerving, especially yeah. with high inflation and everything sure. that's going on right now. So Elasticity mm -hmm. um, in taxes is uh, very, you know, it's very real. So and people mm -hmm. are very aware of it. So, so is Harold particularly. Harold brings this up regularly. He says, we can only tax people so much, and then they'll just say no. No, you yes, know? that's and it. I was a director in Kern County where they had to pass a tax of like, 20 plus years. So, so we can't but you know what? With the library. You put people in this tank because I noticed when I walked for the yeah. military <coughs> overrides for the school sure. district sure. and the bonds, we're yeah. able to get those passed yeah. because the messaging is very clear. This is what the money is going to be spent yep. on. And I think how the um, the district puts out the, um, the, the flyers and what yeah. goes out. You know, and then they also coordinate with CEA, the Colorado sure. Education Association, so it's a joint effort. So I think when we are going out there, it's very clear to the voter what this money is going to be spent on, and the return is for our children. Yeah. So I, I think library, you know, it's, it's the same. Yeah. I think it's not like asking for something frivolous. Yeah. This is something that's very necessary to any community. So I think you know yeah, the messaging and and the timing of what what you bring out and like you were, were saying, so you're not really hiding any information, but you're being strategic in how yeah. it's being um, disseminated. Well, I think how bringing, you know we were we're asked sure. in you know priority based budgeting this year and, and last year to you know this is like the easiest thing I've ever done in budgeting is to say you know how do these budget requests affect equity. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm, th I'm thinking, ooh, for once we win, you know, because I'm yeah. say, I think yes. everything we do is about is about equity. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think you know, it's in providing ways, low income people an opportunity to to attain is. literature, it is. to attain literacy, read, literacy, it. build that literacy. Yes. So, and that's what really levels up that playing field, yeah. is that educational piece. The, the piece I could add on to this discussion, though, is that if you are to go after also figure out the capital side of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you wouldn't want to they, they, they shouldn't have to be related. Yes. You just want to do those two separately. No. Uh, and so, you know, that uh, I think uh, that would potentially make these numbers much larger, yeah. even if you're just going for a lease um, or if you're going to finance any mm -hmm. new facilities, which I think mm -hmm. almost uh, it's very likely you can finance the facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we would want to build that into the how we think of this as well as you know, what would it cost on an annualized basis for those new facilities um, mm -hmm. and what is our sinking fund or our revenue you know our long-term mm -hmm. need to um, you know replace any existing equipment and replace existing facility mm -hmm. and you want to build that all into one package that you ask the voters for mm -hmm. and if you didn't do that you would want to build it into a package where you're doing part of it and you're going to wait to renew it you would do the second part so for example you might decide we don't want to build two library branches at once, but you know we're going to build one library branch, and at the same time we'll have a lease. Mm -hmm. And then when the first library branch is built, if we pay down that debt, you know maybe we were able to do finance it over ten years instead of twenty. At that mark, then we're going to build the next branch. You know, so that phasing piece is also mm -hmm. going to be really important. And some of that is really like we have to first establish the willingness of the community mm -hmm. to pay for the needed and desired services, mm -hmm. and we have to establish the willingness of Council mm -hmm. to do you know to bump, carry out those wishes and if not establish a library district to carry out those wishes. I yeah. totally agree with this. In the Chicago area, before I left, uh, there were a number of communities that put two separate items up. One was for buildings and one was for operating, and a lot of them passed the building measures and not the operating measures. Mm -hmm. So we literally one of them built. Built as a whole second floor of their library, built the library, and they caution taped off the second floor and said, and said, we'll see you up here when you pay for it. So, oh well, wow. <laughs> and, and it worked. And it worked. Yes. But um, you know, having those things together is really important because yes. they're all definitely out there. Yeah. yeah. But then I noticed that Boulder is also having discussions about you know which of the buildings they would be expected to pay for, which of the buildings the city would you know often Sorry. cities give you. Yes. Donate or make you pay a dollar or whatever, and I know that the current library building here has some kind of leveraging with encumbrance, with, encumbrance mm -hmm. with Village of the Peaks. So that's mm -hmm. that's something that would have to be taken into consideration yeah. as well. But that is up in five years. That yeah. bond will be paid off. Five years, yeah. 
Yes. So I appreciate your extra time, Annie. I don't want to keep you too much longer, but we will definitely, I think, need to go over um, some of the questions that we have, and then we'll try and meet again if that's possible. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, I'll check it in tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Good night. I have some questions. So. Well, I have questions we have, too. We have, but we have a lot more meat to this now to, yeah. to go over. So, to to so you want to go through the questions before we go through the rest of the record? No, because I'm going to think about it. You want all my questions now or at the end? <laughs> I mean, I probably can't answer all of them, so it would be good best if you could, right you could write them all down. So we get some kind of list. We can do that. I think we'll have some overlaps. So we skipped a feasibility study update first. So it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, does anyone, anybody want to say anything about this before we move on? Nope. Mm -hmm. Sure, Ford. Oh, no, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, we, the we have to approve the minutes because we jumped very right into this. Everybody have an opportunity to take a look at the main minutes because they can't wrap it up. That's all this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I move that we approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Just, are you comfortable with these minutes? Because I'm not sure if they reflected everything that. I think uh, they reflected yeah, enough of a lot of it. So you're comfortable yeah, if this, this goes out. Okay. So I'll, I'll vote in favor. All in favor? Okay. Minutes are approved. Do we have a quorum? Just. I don't count. I don't count. I'm, I'm you three, 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 right. three, 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 four. Okay. You're just barely there. Well. Yeah. You move around between the sheets, will look like a quorum. <laughs> 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 I get that on my, my board. Yeah, different glasses. Um, okay, having said that, then, and um, we've Kind of did what we thought we were going to do on the feasibility study director report. We have I'll keep it pretty, pretty short and sweet, but um, we have a lot going on still our, with our construction project. Our second floor, if you haven't been in lately, is still closed, but the, the project is moving forward at a good pace and is probably slightly ahead of where we thought the schedule would be. Uh, we haven't had any horrible surprises like we did on the first floor where. When they tell you stop, don't move a cart over that crack in case um, we didn't even want to know what the case was oh, downstairs. Wow. Okay. So we have many, many, many cracks upstairs, um, but they are the individual cracks are less serious than over the ones upstairs. So they are pretty much done with all of the grinding and that glass and glass stitching that they did last time. So staff will be happy. It's been a little more difficult since we this time our not for COVID. We have patrons in the building and staff, so we're you know shouting about the noise. At the patrons, and we have people crammed downstairs so that they have a place to sit, etc. But they've been remarkably, um, patrons have been remarkably appreciative about mm -hmm. what we've been able to do. So mm -hmm. that we, we've stayed open instead of closing to do this, and that we've accommodated them as best we can. So, second floor is going really well. Um, we are, I think, probably the most excited about the fact that we were able to carve out a much larger computer lab mm -hmm. um, upstairs, so that's taking shape. I think they'll be standing on my desk tomorrow morning with some kind of wet stuff mm -hmm. and drilling holes for power and data. They said there's something with a slurry and they'll have to cover me with plastic, so I'll be under the plastic sheet tomorrow as <laughs> well. Wow, okay. So, but it's, it's exciting to have that happen, so we just haven't had a good, um, really good lab space, and we've even seen a difference in our temp space, which is now in part of the meeting room, that we had a much more enclosed space upstairs mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of our folks who struggle with some mental health issues, et cetera, just, just not having that tight yeah. proximity has been very helpful. Mm -hmm. So we've seen a lot of folks much more comfortable if there's some distance between them. So the glass, the glass panel walls that'll be around that, those are just waiting for it to be done. They're in Denver sitting, waiting. So we're looking forward to that. We've had a lot of repainting done. We have, staff has really pitched in like they did last time. We do have movers, but staff has done a good portion of it as well. Mm -hmm. So we've had to remove every single thing from every bottom shelf and then all of the smaller shelves upstairs and put it all back. And 
clean it all off. So mm -hmm. there's fine little dust on everything. So, mm -hmm. um, but when it's done, I'm, I'm just really, really happy that we've been able to do some of these cosmetic things and not just the infrastructure repair. Mm -hmm. Because if we closed for a while and inconvenienced everyone and then opened it up and it didn't look any different, yes. it would be really, really impressive. Yeah. So. Do um, you have to do any changes, like as far as ADA compliance, or was it pretty good? Um, upstairs, not upstairs. We're pretty okay. Um, I know that both of our elevators we need to be re rebuilt, and that will be happening pretty soon. They're not great. Um, mm -hmm. Our we probably have more staff ADA issues than patrons, so okay. um, I still have concerns uh, about some of those. I'm not even talking that about bathrooms, and that's mm -hmm. that's an issue. But you know. Which should we have? I've had multiple folks who've worked for me in other libraries in wheelchairs, and this one would be tough mm -hmm. because the only staff entrance has steep stairs yeah. um, that go to the back. Otherwise, you know, you would have to always call someone to come let you in one of the other doors, or you know, have a have something set up where someone lets yeah. you in the other door at certain times. And you know, that's not really something that you want to. We want people to have an equal opportunity mm -hmm. to get in the building. Yes. So that's that's still a problem. So. Um, I mean, there are definitely still some things that, that this building could use. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, space is the largest of them, so mm -hmm. um, I feel like we've pretty much eked out as much space as we can get since we mm -hmm. got the construction folks to. Uh, There's an empty building right over here called the Creation Station. Uh, yeah, but that was, I don't know. It's, it'll, it's not conducive to much. So, because we have to put at least two two staff members over there, we can't just put one. Mm -hmm. So that's a staffing issue. So, it's a safety issue for us if we put one person alone mm -hmm. with folks in that building, because we have some folks that that can be problematic. So, so. Uh, can you yeah. use it for offices? Possibly, except then the. I person asked Sandy has, about it. Then the person has to run down the block when we move them. I asked her and she said, well, we're thinking about a co-working space for uh, employees. Uh, I said, have you thought about a, how about a studio for LPM? She goes, you'd have to talk to Joni. Yeah, that'd be good. And I, and I thought, you know, or, <laughs> you know, if you could use space. I mean, you have a building sitting there that has been underused for years. But it is very so, small. It uh, has it's a about a thousand square feet. But I know I've been in there, but there's a limit to how many folks you can have in there for a program because of only having one washroom, so it yeah. needs. You know, we did some looking into that. So okay. we would need to have at least two washrooms to have more than like ten people in the program. Mm -hmm. and so it's it's definitely limited its use. I'm not saying that it couldn't be used, but I'm always worried that that you know if we use this thing, which really is not at all ideal for our purposes, then it's like well, you already have a building, so you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's an issue too. But but anyway, um, going along, um, we didn't think. We'd be looking at completion until before maybe the end of May. I think it would be a lot sooner than that. Mm -hmm. So we're just looking at how the progress is going. Progress about three quarters of the way through because um, they did the more inexpensive option, which I understand it is ridiculously expensive to have the roof all the library shelving and take everything off. But they're carpeting around the shelving with us taking off the bottom shelves and all the stuff. So it takes a long time to to hand cut carpet around the bottom shelf. So we've had a few shelves fall apart, etc. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, we had our bilingual outreach coordinator, which is a, our new position for us. She started today. It was kind of interesting because I said, well, you will have a desk upstairs when you have a desk upstairs because your desk is in a heap upstairs <laughs> at this point. So we had her stuck in the boardroom mm -hmm. for now, and she's like half covered in boxes of PPE still. So, um, so she is incredibly excited though when she comes and we stole her from Boulder, from Boulder Public Library and she was basically running the, the no book <coughs> on the Noble Branch. Mm -hmm. And she she's really hit the ground running. So she's uh, she and I sat down to brainstorm and she already has you know, she's already setting up her spreadsheets and, and making her list of contacts and everything. So it'll be great for us to have that kind of coordination. We have a scattershot outreach, but because of our staffing issues, that's what it's been. And it hasn't been well coordinated between sometimes our adults here and children, etc. And so we're we're trying to have a centralized spot. You know, a, a position that we would love in the future would be similar to that, which pretty much all the libraries that where I've worked have had a volunteer coordinator as well. Because once again, we have people trying to handle, let's say, trying to use volunteers, and if you don't supervise your volunteers, they are not of any use to you. 
So we also struggle with that. And then you know something that's a little bit later in the report, but you know, we've been talking a lot about grant writing. You know, there are so many things. That, I mean, I, I think it would be useful for us to make a list of the things that we cannot do mm -hmm. with our current staffing, and that's definitely that's definitely one that we've been talking about. We look at a lot I think of that things. Would be excellent. Because you know, I've, I've written a lot of grants over the years. I think I've received all but one, and I love grant writing. I don't have time to maintain a grant except for the state grants and those things. I don't have time to write grants and maintain grants. And there's Do you no think that's all an option one? I think I, you know, I think that pays for itself. So I think that would be. No, no. I mean, yeah. that your list of things that you thought no. you, you you don't think it would be in an option one. It would be. I don't different. think I would. No, I mean, I would prefer to. Th I mean. I kind of look at the communities where I'm, where I'm living, and you know, when I was in Kern County in California, that's that's a, a poor county. Um, there are, there are a lot of funding deficiencies. There, I would have been thrilled to get to baseline, mm -hmm. but this is not that. Mm -hmm. This is not that community, mm -hmm. and so you know, I, I look at this community and I say, why are you 93rd out of 112 in funding? Mm -hmm. And that what that means to me is that the library is not a priority, mm -hmm. and that there are you know in communities that are that are more well to do, there are often larger discrepancies between the haves and the have nots. Mm -hmm. And and that's what bothers me. Mm -hmm. So is making sure that, you know, we have a lot of folks that use the library. I think we provide amazing customer service. Mm -hmm. I think we have a good collection. I think for a lot of folks that just put materials on hold and pick them up or, or use them electronically, they say library's well, great. But we don't know you know, to what, this is where our new outreach coordinator comes into. We don't always know who we're not serving. And you know, when I, I don't care, any, you know this, I've told you this, I don't care anything about people who just don't want to use the library. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, if it's not their thing, it's not their thing. Mm -hmm. But I care about people who would use the library, but mm -hmm. yeah. they don't have transportation, they, they feel uncomfortable, they are uncomfortable coming to a government building, they feel like we don't have enough staff, staff who speak their language, etc. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we always consider. So there are more option two things that you just take off. <clears throat> what are you getting at? I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 sort I'm, of, I'm trying, I actually, trying to understand what's in the base. I actually consider baseline that baseline you, that you can, option. If yes. we are serving the public, I consider that baseline, we should have an adequate number of staff who are fluent in Spanish, for example. Okay, because I'm just trying to understand it. Yeah. So, you know, we've got these numbers out there, yep. and someone just were to ask me, yep. well, what's in the baseline? Yep. I'm not sure I can Base, answer that Yeah, baseline would be, would, would be um, a lot of what Annie has based baseline on is, you know, we would not be at that that super low percentile as far as right. the spending per right. So, So I would say that our collection is probably close to baseline, our collection size is pretty good, and our collection is, is very well curated. I would say we're close there. Um, we're not close on, on staffing numbers. We're not close on probably programs. We wouldn't be anywhere near close on programs if they weren't completely funded by the friends, right. for example. Mm -hmm. So I think there are things like that where we are not. So, it might and, be, and, you know, it might be helpful to just start yeah. new and I can, kind, I can kind of sketch out because the question will come. And definitely, you know, you look at those numbers of square footage per capita. Mm -hmm. Just the just the the amount of space that you need for the for the population mm -hmm. that we have. And you know, can we you know, should it be a focus? Our focus is always inviting more people to come use the library. Mm -hmm. And should we be doing that if we don't have anywhere to put them? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, some or, if, or if we have to further You'll get that question. Programs. So yeah. Anything more for us? No, we're basically just taken up with trying to um, open up after COVID. Actually, we've had multiple kind of fun things this past week, which is awesome. Um, I came in for a few hours on Sunday because when I take a few days off, I have to work more to catch up. So, mm -hmm. um, so we had the prom dress event. So we I'm had sorry. we had about probably about forty. Um, young women that went with really? dresses, yes, mm -hmm. and those were cool. We have some left. We're going to donate those elsewhere and then take up a new collection next year so we don't have to store them. Mm -hmm. We had a staff member who made some really nice costume jewelry, all kinds of, so a lot of folks who didn't find a dress have sparkly <coughs> things and mm -hmm. they had little handbags. We had yeah. shoes. We had a young man that came in, he was so excited to find a pair of men's 
dress shoes that look like they've never been worn that fit them perfectly. Wow. So, mm -hmm. so that was a lot of fun. And then we had our, I don't know how many years we went to the Peeps contest yet, but, but making things out of marshmallow Peeps. Yeah. And, and they're, they're very um, literacy based. So, mm -hmm. so you definitely have, you know, like Warren Peeps. So, <laughs> and they're their little, their little combat costumes, and and so um, that's been a lot of fun. So it's just fun when I came in on Sunday just to see all of the, all the teens, and then in their teen space, which we didn't have till this year, and then all the families just looking at the peeps. And we've seen a, a lot more folks. It's kind of anecdotal. It's hard to tell. It seems like more and more people are coming in because we're switched into the first floor. But um, you know, looking at our CERC stats from last year and looking that they were back up to the 2019 levels when we were closed for six months means that we, like other area libraries, are gaining patrons since COVID. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of folks that came in that said, I haven't been to the library in years, but I started reading again. And it's, just, mm -hmm. it's, it's electronic materials, but it's not just that. Mm -hmm. So it's been great to see more people. I hope that COVID numbers don't pass away so that we can continue to have more folks in the library. Yes. So, and we hope to have our meeting rooms um, back open soon since we've had to house our upstairs staff in half and our computer lab in the other half. So hoping that we can have those open for programming again at some point. So maybe after um, the end of May, we can start meeting there as a board? You should be, I mean, you can meet there now. I just, I mean, the, the conference room is the stuffiest room in the library. It has like no ventilation and that's the one that has people lined up seated outside of it right now. Um, so you have to keep the door shut and it's extremely stuffy. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we can, we can probably, after we move everybody else upstairs, we can clear some of that stuff out of the board room and be back up. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm that's not, not a problem. urging that, I'm just saying June, you maybe June. Have, yeah, if you want to do that. Okay. And being COVID now. Right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. everything depends on COVID. <laughs> COVID. I've sort of enjoyed coming over here at the end of the day and yeah, so that know. so that people don't come after me when yeah. I'm meeting. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. so. You can always use this space. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a nice space. Um okay. Is that good? That's good. Friends? Are, are you the friends? Yeah, I'm the friends. So um <laughs> it was an interesting meeting. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, they are doing their book sale and um, we volunteered this space for them. And they came over here and said no. I said it was too small. I thought it's way bigger than what we've got available. Well, mm -hmm. no, it's that. Oh, okay. It's getting the that's our elevator. Oh. And getting it's the pallets of us. Yeah, yeah. Getting the books in here would have just been too okay. hard. Mm -hmm. So they're going to try to do it over in the open space over in the civic center. They're talking about that. So oh, that would be cool. So that's what they're shooting for. I brought up the fact that they have a foundation that is separate from the friends. They didn't know that. The board did not know that. I think they did. No, nope. the board itself. It's totally that. turned over. That's part of it. And I said, um, you know, what are the chances of you guys doing this? And they were. They seemed really positive about it. I think they are. No, Prudence oh, came up to, no Prudence came up to me afterwards, and it's, uh, well, you were there, said, and she basically said, you're not said that "Yeah, they need the, the crap out of me." <laughs> so they said <laughs> afterwards because they think they're doing too much already, and they can't take on doing it. And that is it. Okay. I don't know. So what I, you can do that if you want. But I went ahead and re, re uh, uh, fired up the Longmont Library District okay. Corporation nonprofit I created a few years ago. Uh, I'm meeting Justin, um, and he's going to transfer the bank account. I said, Oh, Justin, Mead. yeah, a few years ago, he was going to yeah, be on the board. And I'm going to call Chris Burton, who uh, he is the Boulder um, Library Foundation. Oh, uh, executive I have character. Okay. And uh, they have a huge they do. I know that. 50 years old with millions of dollars. Yeah. So I'm going to hit him up uh, about because before he worked for the Boulder Community Foundation. Okay. And I think he has um, designs to create a Boulder County Library Foundation. Oh, cool. So I'm going to see if he's interested in doing that and okay. having Boulder and Longmont and Louisville and Lafayette. All of us. That's very interesting. Yeah, have a have a county wide library foundation. And he would be I've never seen that. That's interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to meet with him. Okay. Um, Janet? Is that her name? 
on our steering committee for the Janet the, Beardsley. Yep, Janet yeah. Beardsley knows him really well. She's going to join us. They're old friends. So, so okay. I'm going to so I'm going to somehow see what I can do to get That's a, an intriguing possibility to get a foundation started yeah. for a collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, not directly related to the friends, but indirectly. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I thought we were very enthusiastic. I'm sorry. So, I, I thought so too. They, they were for a minute there. So. They acted like it, but apparently they had uh, second thoughts as soon as to me. Yeah. I I don't think Prudence wanted it. I think Prudence is a no person. I'm just she not sure. No, I just think that they maybe don't understand how it works. That it doesn't entail all, all that much work on their part. I don't understand all. either. And they have one. It's yeah. a separate from the Friends Library. It has yeah. almost $40,000 yeah. in it. Just sitting there, and that's why I, I couldn't figure out what Eric Kazemba was talking about when he said we already have a library foundation. Well, so. and that's the thing. He came. I had asked him to come out. He came out when I first got here and talked to the friends group. The friends have had an almost complete turnover. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's where something about pasta translation. Yeah. The reason that Boulder has a very successful library foundation is this one woman spent fifty years building it up. That'll do it. That's, that's <laughs> what it took. It took one person being. Laser focused on it for decades. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll see if we can get going here. I'm too old to spend 50 years on something like that. <laughs> Good career. Um, what's the date of the book sale? I don't know yet. I don't think they've set that. They haven't set it. I think they're also waiting to see how quickly our project is finished upstairs because they would be able to, if that gets done in the in, you know, in short term, mm -hmm. then they could just have it back in the meeting room. Then. Still okay, okay, so probably like summer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think they're hoping for May, but I totally don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. They've, they've been, That's it's been hard for them to plan because they really want to plan mm -hmm. for this, but I can't, like any construction project, I can't tell you exactly when it'll get done. Yeah. In the May. That's what we're saying. We're saying late spring, which is even more happy. <laughs> Actually, I have sooner than end of May is what I wrote down. So. Let's hope so. That's a big one. That be That's assuming we, we don't end up with some What's May 30th, then? <laughs> it's Memorial Day. It'll be done by Memorial Day. I hope so. Shereen's will kill me if I give it to you. Do you have anything for us, Um. So let's see. Last week, council, we met as the LHA. So yep. the Long Island Housing Authority. So we didn't have a regular session meeting. The meeting before that, though, we did um, hear um, the update for the sugar beet mm -hmm. factory. Mm -hmm. um, that. Yeah, just that, that update. And so um, I don't know if you all know, we have, are working with Growing Up Boulder. Mm -hmm. And so our third graders, my third graders, <laughs> my team, they're doing, the kids are doing a design challenge. I love it. Really just um, prototyping what they would like to see in that space. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to see, so we had kids that, uh, some groups did a, um, like a more like a children's museum, exploration zone, um, different from our, tip, our regular museum, but more where it was more interactive. Mm -hmm. you know, so like having the VR, and different mm -hmm. things that they can interact with. So mm -hmm. that, it was that. And then we had another group, a couple other groups that did more of an activity, um, kind of like a rec center. It was interesting because they were putting in um, ice rink and yeah, they made that happen before. Yes, they were what they wanted. Yeah, you know, it was what they wanted, and it was you know they did the research. They looked at parks and recreation Very centers, nice. not just in Colorado yeah. but explored worldwide. Wow, that's so it was really it was really neat. Um, Third they're graders. Third graders. Wow. So we are a STEM school. So yeah. for years, I mean, since they were in preschool, they've been exposed to that um, yeah. design thinking, you know, the ideate, so building empathy, defined, ideate, prototype, feedback. Yeah. So that whole um, that whole process. So it's kind of ingrained in how they how they operate. Um, but overwhelmingly, what we heard from our students was that they don't. They're to, you know, they are, anytime they want to, you know, water world, boondocks, anything, they have to leave Longmont. Mm -hmm. So they want to be able to have these amenities here mm -hmm. in town. Um, so they're not having to, to leave mm -hmm. Longmont. So, yes. <laughs> so there was, uh, there was With that. mother with small children. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and it was interesting because when we started talking, exploring mm -hmm. housing styles, housing mm -hmm. type, they all gravitated toward 
um, like apartments, townhomes, more high density. High density, but <clears throat> it was more condensed where there were community community garden parks, parks and pools that mm -hmm. were nearby rather than the New the urbanism type stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it was really interesting. I mean, and we so as teachers do not do not engage. So what we do is awesome. we give the history. Yeah. We you know okay these are the sites you're allowed to look you know look through. Kittle, you know you search through Kittle. You cannot search open Google. Yeah. So like different those mechanisms but really when you are you know they're they're visualizing what they want to see they research and then they come back with um but with think their about plan. it as a child why would you not want to live next to all your friends you've got this park right here you have yeah. these other well, yeah, here's your pool I'm here's laughing because trick. when you give it to a bunch of third graders they come up naturally with new urbanism they do they like, really wow do. that's because really impressive it's, and and the other thing so our kids Countryside Village, yeah. Casa Esperanza, they they live in a lot of yeah. um, uh, it's low income. Yeah. So they're they're already in apartment settings, mm -hmm. they're already in mm -hmm. just close connected spaces. And they also live with families nearby. Yeah. So it's like all, you know, las familias. So they're all so they want together. connected spaces with So they want connected done. spaces yeah. where they have shared Amazing. shared community places. So that was overwhelmingly what I huh. what I heard. And so that's what, you know, what's interesting when I hear from people who've been here for generations and they don't want to see the growth. And I'm, I'm thinking about what our youth are saying. Hey, they're the ones that are going to be carrying this forward. So we really do need to listen to what our youth is having to say. The other one that was youth um, directed was uh, last week we had Doing Democracy Day. And it's, um, so we had elected officials there. Um, um, the mayor was there. We had a couple of city council people there um, talking with talking with our youth, and it was again, you know, homelessness, housing. Mm -hmm. Housing is a big, a big thing, and we're you know, as far as council, mm -hmm. that's one of our big challenges that mm -hmm. we're we're addressing now is just getting that attainable. Thirty-two percent growth in costs from last year. Six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars like, average cost. Like, yeah, it's, it's insane. And um, I think Colorado, so I sit on the Latino Advisory Council mm -hmm. for Congressman DeGoose, mm -hmm. and we met a few weeks ago, and, um, and just really in comparing our state to other states, our housing costs are just skyrocketing well above what other states are. It is. The increase in other states. So I've it's seen those like we have to do something. About it. I think we're third in the country right now in the mm -hmm. states go for growth. I, I think mean, so. I think so. In terms of costs. And, and then as far as pay, wages yeah. were on the bottom. So our wages are definitely not keeping up. But, and so you know, when I bargain and negotiate with the district, so you're looking at quality of life and people being able to live and work in the same place. <laughs> Did you do that on Kittle, or did you have to go to Google? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no we were looking at our um, yeah, the cost of living index. Yeah, so we were looking at the big stuff. I bet. Um, yeah, it's insane. Um, it's and you so, can research for third grade, though. I love that. Oh, it was amazing. They were, I was really proud of that. And they were really engaged. They were very engaged, and so that was that. Was There's nothing kids that age like more than to be asked what they think. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they and lived, they, they rose to that to that challenge. Um, and I'm saying, yeah, so with the housing, that that update, um, yeah, I don't, I'm trying to think if we had anything else. I feel like there was something else I wanted to share, but I forgot. I'll send an email. <laughs> Are you, is the, is the uh, council talking amongst yourselves at all about the library? So there has been some conversation. I think we're really like looking forward to hearing mm -hmm. about the feasibility, what the feasibility study has to, has to show. Um, you know, in conversations that I've had with folks, like you know really let's take an open-minded approach you know we might have our idea of what we want to see at the end but if we are truly a democracy and we are letting the people speak then we need to hear and guide our policy so I'm, I'm like trying to frame it in a way that you know let's take an open-minded approach that's not have our decision made before <laughs> what what decision do you think they had made before I don't know I just I'm just throwing it out there I, I, just mean, think, I don't want to make assumptions. <laughs> I just feel like when I first arrived here, I think the impression overall, and not just council, mm -hmm. was just that everyone loves the library. Mm -hmm. But then I looked at that disconnect between, you know, I just got it, got here on the tail of the first priority-based budgeting, mm -hmm. and we had nothing in the top 50%, 50th percentile. Mm -hmm. And so everything was ranked as, as unimportant. 
And then I look at the community satisfaction survey, and here's the libraries that can only do public safety. And, and uh, here's this yeah. disconnect. Yes. Here's this, yes. oh, it's, and you know, every once in a while, someone would say something like, oh, we have 30,000 extra dollars in the pot fund, would that help you? Well, yes, but that's not and even, that's be, not yeah, a person. So, no, you know, that's no, not a, that's not, a, so I, I'm hoping that what this study addresses is really the, the deficit. That, that tipping point yes. and that the deficit is, is larger than people realize. And yes. it, when compared with peer libraries and with just the needs of the community, so. And the, the part that I have, the issue I have with the priority-based budgeting is, okay, so let's say, you know, we're looking at this percentage piece, but let's say that our, 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 um, Indigenous population, they make up a small yeah. portion yeah. of our community as a whole, yeah. let's say. And I'm just making this up. But, okay, so there's a service that maybe tailors to that particular group, and 95% of that group utilizes and values mm -hmm. that service. But then in relation to the community as a whole, it's it only falls yeah. less than 5%. Yeah. So then where do we put our... So yeah. we really, if we're really wanting to, to build that equity, we have to look at how it ranks within those subgroups. So really, um, and I think, you know, the It's that 90-something percent of people having a computer at their home, but, you know, then looking at the COVID effect and saying, well, what if all these folks have one computer and they have four people now that need yeah, to use that? that need to so use that, that computer. That's why our hotspots so, are always out and stolen. And you know, and priority based so. budgeting always confused me because I really think it came down to advocacy. Mm -hmm. It does. I mean, it does. It's the loudest voice. Yeah. Who is out there with their hand out the most? And I, think, mm -hmm. I think that's what the library. I think libraries are learning that to whisper anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and you know, one of the arguments that we have in negotiations is when we're looking at salaries. Sure. So you 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 budget, and you put money into what you value. That shows what yeah. you value. Yeah. So if you put a small portion, do you value that? Yeah. And, you know, of course, they all have to put your salaries. <laughs> Anything so, <laughs> else? No, I think so. If, so. if something else comes to mind, I'll okay. jump, just jump in. Uh, I'm going to move through some of these other ones because I think you've um, been reading the newspapers and probably understand what's going on. Uh, with respect to the Boulder Library District, uh, the big issues there occurred on April 5th and April 7th. April 5th, they had a, a joint session between the county commissioners and the city council and um, talked through what they had planned for their uh, library district. Amazingly, they had uh, over 100 people mm -hmm. waiting to be heard mm -hmm. as part of the um, mm -hmm. town hall. And at the end of it, city council voted six to three in favor of moving the initiative forward. Then it went to the county, just the county commissioners on the 7th, mm -hmm. and they um, didn't move at all. Uh, they uh, elected not to take a position at this point in time, which is, is really a, you know, a death knell to the, mm -hmm. to the initiative because you know, there are certain deadlines that need to be met. Basically, they said that no. We're not, we don't, we don't want yeah. to do the district, we're not going to approve it right now, you have to come back with these things or some but stuff. But they still can go around. Well, what they did is they got the, the yeah. jo Johnny, who's a little, yeah. like, kind of like the version of me there. Yeah, um, definitely. And she, uh, she was pissed off because they, the county came to them and said, expand it out into the county, please. And yeah. they said, okay, well, because they were going to do just the city. And they just they And they expanded out the county, now the thing got, and then the county can sit Yeah, the county backed off. So they're pissed. So she's going back and she's saying, listen, right? we have enough people in, in they, they have 2,000 signatures. Yeah. Right. They laid 100. Yeah, you need 100 signatures. signatures. Anybody, what was the rationale? Why did they decide not to? They heard a lot of no's. They heard a lot of, the anti-tax people came out. And that's, Which they're going to do in any yeah, situation. I know. And there was one of the county commissioners, the newer one, I can't remember her name. Well, I, remember her name. I can't remember her name. But um, she was kind of bad. Claire Levy? Was that yeah, that's one? it. That's the one. She was actually quite against it, which really surprised me. So, anyway. Against the district, or the, I, read two, I read multiple things. Against the formation of a district, or, in, or against the amount of funding they were I think it was a timing issue. I, I think with with uh, you know inflation and stuff like that, and people mm -hmm. you know perceived that they were she was hurting. At the amount. 
they didn't know how they were going to impose higher taxes mm -hmm. on this and, and be able to. Mm -hmm. She said, speak um, to that. people are telling me they don't know how they're going to stay in their houses. Mm -hmm. Now that's that. Now that is kind of I mean extreme. It's it's two hundred fifty dollars a year per. Per a million dollar house. A million dollar, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it was like one seventy nine something for a. Yeah, it's twenty seven dollars per hundred thousand. Yeah. Of valuation. So mm, I don't know. Are you, do you ever eat at McDonald's? Eat there three times a month? Well, then you have spent your. <laughs> there, there it is. So don't tell me you can't. Really. I don't buy that. If you live in a million dollar house, you can afford. Uh, is there a way that she can also, like, during the presentation, like? pull together numbers about approximately what it would cost sure. per, and then, per yeah. taxpayer. Yeah, absolutely. So I think because when you look at a large, that is, it's like, yeah. oh my God. It was like, well, no, we're not asking like, what are you going to do? No, she can do, that. she can do that right away. What would it cost the average? Well, we just found person. out what the mill levies are worth here. We asked Jim, yep. and it's mm -hmm. $1.8 million per mill levy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we would need somewhere between two to four. So at the low end, two at the high end, three point seven or something like that. Yeah. So no, I can ask her to do that. Just just, just long that, actually. That would yeah. be just long. Absolutely. She actually had numbers in her her handout, but yeah. um, I'm not sure if I understood I how she got them. But um, uh, I, I and then she she referenced a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, and then the Scotts point yeah, yeah, yeah. the average is six seventy five. So it was not. I think this is, it this is a lot of good data, but I do you think two, If you were at 2.97 mil, let's see. I just did the yeah. back of the yeah. envelope calculation that mm -hmm. Scott did. I said, okay, well, if it's 8 million bucks, that's that's 4 mils. She said, right? if, if it's point, she said if it was 0. 0.51 mils for $1,000, that's $178 by the $350,000 yeah, that's that's wrong. That's already wrong. I can tell you that's wrong already. So, and I couldn't tell whether she was doing incremental over existing well, I'll taxes. Ask for that or, to be clarified because I don't think that's yeah. right either. That was one of my questions. And that's the that's the stuff that will because um, somebody's going to find that mm -hmm. and they're going to point that out and they're, they're going to say this entire thing is BS because yeah. that's yes. right. so you got to be careful. She's got to be on the yes. money here. Yeah. So. Um, so that's so that's I think what they did was they're they're going to force it through now if they're going to put it on the ballot regardless mm -hmm. of whether the Boulder City Council approves it or the city county approves it they're just like we're done waiting do you and mean, I understand that I do too because it's been like six years with them yeah but mm -hmm. do you think that the county commissioners will actively Work against it. it won't matter because they're not going to do it for the county. They're only going to put the city. That's right. That's, oh, that's right. If they send yes. them, they're back to the city of Boulder. Yes. So that's no gun barrel, high water, right. any of that. All that's out. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we made it pretty clear in our last library district meeting that to our Nywalk representative that mm -hmm. right now we're not really considering the county. And if they want to be part of the district, if we go that route, mm -hmm. They have to come ask us and convince us that it's a good idea. Otherwise, well, we're I not did, even going to ask. And I did talk to David Farnan about that, and he said, you know, from their he's the director in Boulder, and he said from their calculations, that's not a money. It's not a, it's a wash, pretty yep. much. The amount that you gain in taxes spend, for Niwot, you'd spend on a branch because they're not going to vote for yep. it without a branch. Niwot so, is in a weird position. Their position is, is accurately this: we don't. We're free we riders. We, we don't pay for the Boulder Library or the Walmart Library, and we use both. And yeah. we like it that way. Yeah. We like not paying for services. Yeah. They're a bunch of... Well, which is, but, that's, but, <laughs> but which is why they're going to ask for a branch. You know, if, they, if they are going to pay something, then they want to get something for it. Yeah. So they're going to ask for a branch. Mm -hmm. yeah, not why. But I would love, to, you know, personally, and this is just me speaking, I think we really need probably two branches in... The problem, Walmart before I would stick yeah. on oh, yeah. The problem is that, and the problem with an Iowa is that they, um, it's mostly older people without kids. Uh, their kids are grown. They're wealthy. Uh, they don't use the library. You know, they they use their Kindle and they buy. We have quite a few Iowa residents that use our library. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones with money are, and the loud ones, the quite the majority of them, this tiny minority that's very loud, uh, are the rich ones. Those are the ones that were showing up at these meetings. And I, I'd say that we were some of the younger people in that room at that meeting, you and I. <laughs> and 
the 65 and 70. So I don't think that this, you know, these guys were definitely not. You know, if you believe in conspiracy theories, it was almost like county staff put an anchor into the process yep. by saying the food. That's what I thought. Because Niwot really wasn't in favor of it and by having them in the mix. It complicates that and it brings in brings in the county. Whereas if you just keep it within the city district, well, they're, it's, I'm pretty it's sure a lot of room. So their intention initially was just to do Boulder. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were doing a favor to the county and the county screwed them. Yeah. That's really what happened. Yeah. Wow. They didn't do many yeah, things. Really what happened. Okay. So that's generally what's happening with Boulder and Boulder come. Uh, this uh, Longmont Library District Committee, the, the big news there was that uh, we met with Susie. Mm -hmm. That was the really big news. <laughs> and she gave us a piece of her mind <laughs> as, as, to what, as to what she expected. <laughs> no, she was very gracious. It was, it was great hearing from her. Mm -hmm. And um, then we also had a chance to meet with uh, some of the senior folks from the city, Harold and uh, to assistant uh, city managers. And Joni and um, Sandy and mm -hmm. Jim Golden. And so you all form. So that's who runs the city. See, she willing to engage and willing to talk through the process as we move forward. So I was impressed that we got all form to show up in one meeting like that. Oh, first, one first time we asked, yeah. So they're taking it seriously, that's good. Yes. Which, which will probably come back when we talk about dates for when the uh, presentation will actually occur. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was going to say, I made a typo on C. I don't know what government grants and P. Government grants and P. We understand what P yes. is, program. So um, <laughs> this is a carryover from last one. We're probably. I don't have anything specific on this right now, but but you know, we I do see, you know, I brought one thing forward because I do see grant opportunities. And you know, there are some times when we apply for them if they, but I hate to have our criteria based on what we can handle time wise mm -hmm. and not necessarily on how beneficial the grant would be. And that's where we are. So the, the reason I wanted to keep this on here was, was, you know, I don't see the board writing the grants, but there might be things we can do to help the library at, at least point that aspect of when we talk to people that hey this is an opportunity that's that could be addressed but if if staffing or funding were a little different that you might be able to send resources that way that that actually makes money for the library and reduces the impact on the city so that that was and it's where true. I, I remember going to a grant writing i was sent to a grant writing workshop in current i was in Kern county that had an eight point something million dollar budget for 25 branches and so that's how bad the funding is there. It's spread out over 8,000 miles so that was interesting. Mm -hmm. But I go to this grant workshop and everybody else who's there are grant writers. They're, mm -hmm. they're, and I thought, I thought, I'm going to this to find out some you know ways that I could somehow squeeze some more, some more grant funding out mm -hmm. and and we're like, well, have your grant writer do this. I'm thinking, well, that would be me. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's why I had to do 25 of the oh, so. wow. But there we got every, you know, the typical grant scenario is that they pay for stuff and not for staff. Mm -hmm. So that's always an issue in libraries because mm -hmm. in Kern County, oh my gosh, I got I turned a old microfilm room into a GED testing lab because we partnered with probation. That was a good a good grant to do because mm -hmm. people went for their started on their degrees while they were incarcerated and mm -hmm. then got out and they weren't about to go back to jail and prison to finish. Yeah. Yeah. But we got so much stuff. We had 3D printers, we had laser cutters, vinyl cutters, you know, fancy sewing machine. We had everything for the most fabulous, in space, mm -hmm. for the most fabulous of maker spaces. And we didn't have any staff to run it. That's, so, that's why um, you gotta have a good community around. Yeah. That's why Tinker Mill works, it's the community. It is. It's not it the, yeah. It is. So, but when you're in a community that doesn't have high education standards, et cetera, trying to find high tech volunteers was not a simple prospect. So, I, I do want to keep this on, and I will bring some more information. Okay, back. good. It's, it's a frustration. Because mm -hmm. I, I think there's probably people, you know, we can introduce it to the conversation and mm -hmm. talk, talk to the right people and talk to the community. And there are there are some grants that uh, there are more. This discussion started because there. Are, for a long time, the any grants, federal grants that 
um, applied to library infrastructure, applied to you know buildings, mm -hmm. etc., had totally disappeared. And now the last few years, um, there there are some federal grant monies that are available that are apparently under applied for. It's a general grammar mm -hmm. um, that I, I saw a whole bunch of libraries that are pretty well healed in California that applied for it and got them. Hmm. So you know, and some of them would be. I saw one that was seventeen million dollars. You know, for oh, let's wow. let's build a branch, let's do this, and so. Mm -hmm. So there are some grants that have been kind of under the radar, yes. but that are available, but people have to bug their Congress people, et cetera, uh -huh. and, and about them. So that's the type of thing I think board members could help with, is some of the, if those type of grants come up, is, is helping bring them to the attention to be the people who make decisions. So, mm -hmm. so are, are, is grant writing such a unique capability that somebody from city staff Mm. Couldn't. It is a skill set. Mm -hmm. Well, and you need to know the you know about the entity for which you're. So it's they special really, in areas. really yeah. comes back to, to you and whoever. And it is. To do it, okay. Which I said, I like doing it. It's the I like writing it, and the writing it isn't the most time-consuming part. It's the maintenance usually. Mm -hmm. It's the you know, oh, oh, it's time for the quarterly report, and not oh, it's mm -hmm. time for this, and yeah. And keeping track of it. There's always strings attached. Yes. So I did forget. April 21st at 6 p.m. we have our joint meeting, City Council and School Board. Oh, one of the topics really? on the agenda. Yes. Are nice. you bringing your shields and your swords? No. <laughs> this will be the first. I, I've never seen it in no. the 10 years and I've so been here. I've I brought seen. it up, and this was bad news yeah. the mayor. And I said, you know, we have joint meetings with our county commissioners, with our judges, with our Congress people, with our uh, state board. legislators, but we do not. That's have excellent. Them. So, so yeah, of course, I got a call right away yeah. from the superintendent. <coughs> I was teaching. <laughs> well, you know, like, what's it about? That's about like, oh, but that's we need to. We but that was Hadad, Hadad's the reason for that, you know. What that we don't. Do. Yeah. Well, I'm the reason we do. Oh, good for you. So, <laughs> Good for you. So we have we meet on the twenty first, six p.m. One of the agenda items is the library district. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be talking about um, ECE, early childhood okay. education, and housing. Mm -hmm. um, it's on there because of Tim. Okay. Tim. Well, and I, I, I send it. it I, you know, we. So was it you? I put library. I put um, the library update. I put um, preschool ECE update. Anything that would have pertained to school district mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. as well as and for me housing yep. I, mean, I really would like to throw in wages but i don't know if that would be like bargaining in bad faith because i'm on the bargaining team so okay like <laughs> don't worry, i can really do that I have to draw a line but um but really yeah looking that's at, great at so how do you think the conversational center around the library district what what do you think will be the i really want to know what what they know i want to know what what is their input i mm -hmm. want to know you know the support mm -hmm. that we have not necessarily fiscally but mm -hmm. you know philosophically or still does it work, just does it work for them or not yeah. work for them yeah. isn't, isn't it a competing isn't it seen by the school not district as competing necessarily for property well tax okay so that's the, the impacts could be that no yeah, be override be. piece um, because we are very good about getting our military overrides mm -hmm. passed getting those bonds mm -hmm. passed so it would be interesting to hear what mm -hmm. what the argument is mm -hmm. and I also believe that that's also good to know as far as messaging mm -hmm. negotiating and um, you know because we're, we're buying for for community mm -hmm. support well, so you it's know, always the, good to know what they're You know what the present thinking is on my what because that's yeah. part of the school district, so yes. that would be and it's something that because, they should yeah, help. And, and Niwot, um so Indian Peaks is part of the Niwot yeah. Theater. So Burlington, Indian Peaks, Sunset is a Longmont school. The only school that is, um, you know, that have, El Niwot Elementary. Yeah. And it is, like, the numbers are, like, our theater is small. Um, we do yeah. not have a lot of Niwot residents in the Niwot Theater. Okay. The majority of it is coming from Burlington and Indian Peaks. Okay. So you could see how the, the numbers of children yeah. in that what families in that Niwot are. What about the high there. school? The no. high school. Well, the high school. So then all the kids that go to Sunset all are at, go to um, Niwot High School. Really? Yes. And that entire section along that goes to Niwot. So a higher okay. section of Niwot. Um, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I guess the question I start off, I tend to start off with just sort of discussions with any group is just that I think people need to, to think about and look into why in the state of Colorado more than half of the libraries are in our districts. Mm-hmm. So it is funding. So it's, it's, it's purely funding. It's yeah. purely funding. So, yeah. yeah. So if you are available at 6 p.m., feel free. It's open to the public. On the 21st. <laughs> on the 21st at the Innovation Center. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I think that would be an interesting conversation. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be broadcast or anything? Or is it just I don't know. I don't have no idea. I didn't, I I didn't it's go it's far. It's in person, though, right? It is in person. So you have to ask LPN to do it because they have to send somebody. Did, so. any, did anybody ask? Not that I know. Oh, I haven't okay. heard. So. Oh, I bet oh, they don't know about it. Hmm. So, okay. I'll ask Maria. I think that would be a nice yeah. I think that would be something that would be nice to have a part of. Yeah. I mean, that's in what this is, but, yeah. you know, we record these and put them a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, because I think, didn't we have our legislative, didn't we have those? Uh, when we met with our county commissioner and our state reps, was it recorded? If you did it on Zoom, it was. We, we did it, well, one we did on Zoom, but before COVID. If you don't ask, then, and we don't know okay. that, Sandy and her team have to tell us, I think. Okay, Sandy, so. I'll, I'll see if anybody just considered that. Or it's up to you. I mean, it's yeah. really, that's kind of one way to get the word out to the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's important. Uh, yeah, I was really shocked that we do not have joint meeting with the school district. Huh. Because we overlap. Yeah. Right. You have a lot of common interests, so we do. that makes a lot of we sense. Do. And I think it's important that we know what entities, mm-hmm. what are our priorities, what are their priorities, and for servicing the same community. She has an agenda item on the back page here, so you can't go just yet. Oh, okay. I'm not <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, why don't you tell us what you think you know about the city council meeting on April? Oh, I know that I know that it will be on the nineteenth. Um, okay. I talked to Karen and Bill about the work. Karen left, mm-hmm. and basically that's when we found out that originally Andy was going to do this as a two-part thing, mm-hmm. and had a little different division of, of what was going to be in part one and part two. And then you know Harold basically said he wanted to reach this point <coughs> by her presentation, and so she's been working on the financials. But I was not comfortable putting this up. Mm-hmm. On the meeting without any of us having a chance to discuss it, right, and go over that. And we so, told Harold that too that we really yeah. nice yep. report we didn't like that. Yep, I agree. Uh, we didn't like that. No, we were not happy. So, so, yeah. but I mean, he was he, he, he heard us though. He was like, yeah. you know, he, he promised he'd make sure it got to us first. But, so it sounds like it's going to be the twenty sixth. I hope so. He he also mentioned May, but it sounds like well, he meant the reason he mentioned May was because they felt originally that it would be more that a study session would be more conducive to allowing more time for for discussion. He told her to keep the presentation to fifteen minutes, which yeah, you know, right. which she kind of you know blanched at that point. Right to, so to cram a lot of not. Fifteen yeah. minutes. No, so, it's not. But I mean, that's what she said. If yeah. it really needs it to be that, you need to tell me what to cut out, no. what to emphasize. Listen, they give LEDP, which is you know one fourth. Oh, I was sat there a lot of long presentations. Yeah, no, they. So have you. So, so. and granted, I don't want it to be as you know long winded as some, but well, it has, a little but it has, long windedness could is might be in order. Yeah, <laughs> I think. But it's I know that, it, that if you don't have any background at all. People are not going to know what's going on. What happened last time is we that's what happened was we didn't have time mm-hmm. and we didn't have the exposure to council to go over. We didn't have this. No. And so everybody made assumptions and said things like, you know, you're you're taxing the hell out of stuff, you're building Pravda and Longmont, you're I mean all this stuff they made up. And you know, mm-hmm. that, so I th- that I mean, can't happen. So I mean that's the thing. I mean, because we got a lot of pushback about why do you have this long situation assessment to go with it and I'm a, you wanted it. <laughs> well, no, but I wanted it. Well, you, know, you, you, you yeah. also wanted it. You have to justify your position. You do, and, 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 and you even if it. even even if it's even if most folks don't read all sixty-eight pages or whatever, it's there. So if they so if someone says, "How did you come to this conclusion?" It's <laughs> it's in the situation assessment on page thirty-four. Mm-hmm. You know, here's, a, where, here's where we got it. There's so, a significant sub, so, subgroup and, of people and, that will read it. Well, and also you're talking <laughs> to librarians to read everything. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, I would be one of those people who would read it. 
Okay, so so let's so, let's so just assume strategically. So she was planning to come in and hopefully early and meet with the board just prior to that meeting. This board. one last meeting. This board. This. That's this awfully. Board. I mean, if we so I, th I still think we need to meet between before that. that. Yes, because we because if, if she expects to meet us right before I, the council meeting, no, that, we have changes. We so here's here's the difficulty though when you're looking at these dates, and there has been some, there have been um, so there were some personal issues with some personnel in the city clerk's office that have, have made made well that someone had a death in the family. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. um, it has been, you know, urged that we get things in even earlier for them for everything to be compiled into the packets. It's quite a job yep. and reviewed. So I'm thinking for the 26th, I think we'll have to have things in total everything, the whole package, you know, the PowerPoint presentation and everything finalized by the 18th. So when so, we see it, do we have a special meeting of this group? I think we need to have a special. That's meeting. what we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. The I other, the other alternative would be just to tell them you're not going to be ready, and we'll do it in May. And okay, that's a know change. It's, it's only, a change from our position, yeah, yeah. but I'd rather see it. Well, this is what this right. is what I mean. I, I think that we need. To, we still have some questions. I'd rather do it in May and have an hour or two. I'm fine with that. And I, I mean, it is not a problem. I mean, it's right. only. I only bumped it to this 26 provisionally because I had to get it off the 8th of the 18th or whatever, 19th. But 15 minutes is not going to cut it. Period. No, so I think it should. I think we should go for whatever. The third, uh, whatever. The third is. I have to see which one. Which one is the study? Third? Which one is the study session in May? I have to look at the. Oh, the I can send that out. Study session. It would be. Council doesn't send me that. No, it, but I I can look online. Oh, okay. so, yeah. <laughs> I'll look online and send, why don't I look online and send it to you guys? Which one's the study session? Okay. Well, okay, so so my interest in that it, in all this is to give this board enough time I agree. To, to be able to send an opinion on to council. May tenth is a study okay. session. Quick, quick, the third. The tenth is a study session. Quick question right? on Susie about yes. study sessions. Do they yes, do it in public? Might it be heard? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. We just have one yeah. public invited to be heard. Okay, and that's because the we're going to show up. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, um, and you'd want to be before the presentation uh -huh. anyway. Right. Yeah, you would. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's fine. And we would like to be able to say that we have seen the study, and we either endorse it or don't yeah. endorse mm -hmm. it, or, yeah. or would point out certain things mm -hmm. to to counsel that. Uh, time may not allow to come out mm -hmm. during um, you know the normal presentation. The first sort of third thing. Tuesday, so the first Tuesday would be May third is a study mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first and third Tuesday is what this website says. Let me go, let me go to the so actual go, calendar yeah. though, mm -hmm. because I know oh, that okay. like this like there's one of the weeks that there isn't a meeting. I'm not the sure third, the third is yeah, no meeting. Third is not a meeting. <laughs> yeah. So they I have think the 26th, then it skips to the 10th. Which is a regular meeting. So the is, it, is it the 17th then? Would be the study so session. a month later. So uh, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. That's a regular meeting. That's a regular no, meeting. it means for us. For, well, what, when do you think this will go? If we say let's push it to May, what if do you, you push think? It to May, if you push it to May 17th, we would probably have to have everything in a week earlier than that. Well, you should have so, it done as soon as you should have it done. But yeah. um, so then, um, I think it, I think it will be done before then. I think it's a push. Mm -hmm. Now, considering that we have we have more stuff to work with, mm -hmm. but we also have questions. And I think you know she's really absolutely open to us helping to refine mm -hmm. this information into you know because different things mm -hmm. work in different communities. Mm -hmm. So I think she's completely open to having us refine this now. I always respect, it's interesting, because I've been a part of a lot of strategic planning and feasibility type studies, and you know, I always want to refine the information so it's understandable and communicable, mm -hmm. but you know, there's a reason we have an outside person doing this too. Mm -hmm. So I provide, I will answer questions, I will ask questions, I will provide information, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say, well, this doesn't make the city sound too good, or you know, this or, or this does, or you know, this. No, you're not, you're mm -hmm. not an advocate, you're a yeah. resource. So, so let's yeah. let's just assume the seventeenth is the day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it will be or not. Okay. 
So then we would want to see it a week before that? Well, I want to see it long before that. This month. No, I mean for a meeting. I think, I don't, meeting. I think that's reasonable. A meeting in the board. Oh, yeah. I don't our, when's our next board meeting? 16th, but the 16th. Oh, we don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we, we need, need, a, we need a special meeting. meeting. Whenever you set it for it, so yeah. just let me know. Well, it just depends on when we speak. No sense setting it until we have the data, so. Yeah. No, I mean, I can set a date, but I, I need to when make sure have, the date. When will we have a final? Well, By the mean, 26th, for sure. <laughs> because that would, that would sure be as final as it was. Um, as it would be. Uh, if I, but, my recommendation to you all is to try and get the 26th, and then if you've got extra time to fool around and talk to people for it. I So you should still try and hit the 26th, and we can set a meeting. So then we meet the second. It doesn't have to be a Monday, I guess. Yeah, we, we could meet the second. Yeah, that'd be Monday. Special session. Yeah. You should, I mean, you're the only one that can talk to all of us, so you should yeah, coordinate I'll, that. Yeah, I'll do that. I can do a doable or whatever. Yeah, perfect. That's easiest. And then what I will need from all of you, too, what I will ask in an email, is looking at this, you know, what questions or suggestions or additions, revisions, yep. deletions do you have? And then you need to send those to me, not, not you know, don't reply all. Oh, like I say that. You guys are really good though. My, my last couple of ones. I'm I very know. aware of some, I some, to... such I love. And, yeah. <laughs> so do you do you believe that we'll have it in our our fat little hands on the 26th? It depends on how many questions and how many deletions and changes and amendments you make. Well, the answer. I was yes for a lot of those events. I will tell her we need it by the 26th. The answer really should be regardless of any of those things should be yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I have to consult with her first to make sure she's available on May 17th. The 26th. Or whatever. No. May 17th is the meeting for the council. For what? To come to Longmont, to, her to come to Longmont present to council on May seventeenth. Yeah. She should really May seventeenth. Yes. Yeah, her April seventeenth. Yeah, May seventeenth. If it's approved by council, she should really try and hit that date. I don't know. If what's approved by council? That they want it on the seventeenth. They don't. We you just put it on, put it on, just put it on the agenda. All right. Yeah. No, I, I take that but back then. then. If it's go, if you're it's wanting good, a study or, session, not a regular session. That's what I've been told. That, yeah. We want um, we want a yeah. significant portion of that time. Yes. Like so then at the least an hour, maybe two study, hours. Study session is better. Or a regular session. Uh -huh. Yeah. There are fewer things on the agenda because you're not mm -hmm. doing as many things that people yeah. are voting on. Yeah. And then so. the 26th of April is a regular session that's anyways. Regular. Yeah. yeah. But I can certainly tell her that we want the finished product by the 26th. Mm -hmm. Because I know Harold's expecting that, so he'll have a lot of questions if we don't have something. Yeah, he was expecting it on the 19th. But part of it is that I have never spoken to Harold ever until until that meeting with Karen about this. So you know, I did not know. Really, what he says he talks to you. No, he just said that. We should. No. <laughs> We should wander over to City Hall someday. I'll introduce you to him. No, no, no. I'm not saying we haven't talked. I mean, we've talked like, you know, I'm here to pick up my holds. That no, no, that's that. not how he so really We did not have a, a long conversation about this. He, he made it sound like you guys talked. So, okay. We did. We said, I mean, we had a conversation with he and Karen and I. No, this was like recently. Like you talked that recently. That was recently. Oh, okay. Well, that no, was like a week ago. Well, he, the impression he left us was that his deadline was the 19th. Okay. I'd say we're done, Susie, if you really want to go. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. Are we adjourned? Yes. No, we are adjourned. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Ooh, long game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can stop recording. Okay.